Well, we'd have to want for the lights to come on. Mm -hmm. So 5.30, <laughs> pretty much. Greetings, I'm Sarah Holden, Vice Chair of the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee, standing in for our Chairman, Suzanne Nelson, who is away this evening for an unexpected activity. I call this 32nd meeting of our advisory committee to order and welcome you all to present all of you who are present and those who are watching live or watching later on YouTube or the city's website. Today, our target for our meeting is about to last an hour, so we'll see how this goes. We want to give a special welcome to our new member, Edward, Mr. Edward D. Blizzard, Jr. He's a graduate of the city's Citizen Academy and was recently appointed to our committee, so we'd like to welcome you to our committee. Thank you. To help him get to know everyone this evening and so that we can get to know him, I'd like to ask him to tell us a little bit about himself, and then we'll each introduce ourselves as we go around the room. Okay, I've lived in Jacksonville since 1980 and um, retired Navy, Chief Osborne Corman. I've also uh, worked as a math teacher over at Coastal Carolina Community College for 15 years and um, live in the Branchwood subdivision. And we have a nice park over there, which I took my grandson to the, today for more than an hour. And um, we love our park and we love <laughs> the Clean and Green program in Jacksonville. Mr. Carroll. Patrick Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> Got me. Mine, mine was somewhere though. <laughs> Betty Shufflebach. Gina Webb. Willie Sonnes. Grace Halbrook. Sunshine Williams. I'm Lily Gray, staff to the committee. I'm Sarah Holden. I'm Glenn Hargett, also staff to the committee. I'm Dale Sonnes, Jacksonville Police Department. Yolanda Henley, administrative assistant. Michaela Fuso, administrative assistant. Thanks. So we'll move on now to adopt the agenda. The members are asked to review the agenda listing and adopt <coughs> the agenda before the proceeding. So a motion to adopt would be appropriate now. I make a motion to adopt. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. The motion passes. We'll move now to the consideration of the minutes from August 4th, 2016. A motion to adopt, correct, or reject the minutes would now be appropriate. I'll make a motion to adopt them. I second that motion. <laughs> that motion. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. The following minutes is the official attendance report, which must be submitted to the clerk every month. If there is a mistake in the report, let the staff know as soon as you can. The city ordinance requires an automatic removal for certain absences, so keep an eye on that. This evening, we'll move to our presentation. Sergeant Dale Silence will join us this evening. Um, he's been, uh, or he was here a year ago after being assigned to his duties as the Police Community Services Division Supervisor, and he is here now to give us an update on the police clean and green. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. I'm Dale Silence, as she mentioned, I'm the supervisor over the Community Services Division. My job there is to oversee the community officers, and we'll get into those here in a minute, who they are and what they do. Uh, the school resource officers, the great instructors, which is gang resistance education and training, and the DARE instructors. So I have roughly 12, 13 officers currently that work for me um, doing all those many tasks. So if you have any questions, by all means, please feel free to ask. <clears throat> all right, Jacksonville's Clean and Green. Uh, our part of that is to approve the appearance, cleanliness, and pride in the city of Jacksonville. It is about being green, uh, respecting our environment, and involving uh, our citizens. Through Clean and Green Jacksonville, uh, the city strives to set examples and support community clean and green activities and programs. As you can see, the city of Jacksonville is broke down into sectors. Now, these names have, have changed because, as every job, we have constant turnover. Um, but these, uh, unlike the, the patrol, is actually broke down into zones, we have sectors. So every sector is assigned one officer. That officer is a basically a community officer. That officer goes out in these areas, and his job is not so much to answer calls. Now, he does. That's still his primary function. But his, his other function is to go out and make contact with business owners, property managers, um, <coughs> uh, any, 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 any relationship that we can build 
for long-term relationships and, and bettering the community. So let's say in sector one, say you have um, are the laser here, the and we, we'll put you in the annotation. Let me let you sit here. Here, come sit here and you can, you can swirl away. Okay. <laughs> so if you, if you look right in, let me find it, right in here, um, about a month and a half, two months ago, everybody can see that. That is the uh, Myrtlewood Circle area. Uh, both the uh, Sector 3 and 1, actually all the offshore ended up coming together, but they found a trail that runs um, all back through these woods here, over back here, uh, basically a walking path. Uh, it was an area for homeless. It was an area for just people dumping trash. Um, and and it, we ended up getting with streets and uh, a couple other folks uh, zoning. Went out and we cleaned up that area, and it took us probably about two days to clean up all the trash. It was mattresses. I mean, everything you can imagine was dumped back there in those woods, and it was just filthy. So those officers changed their clothes, put on their work clothes, and went out and began cleaning up that area and got all that trash picked up. Um, there was, I want to say, at least two trucks load, two truck loads of trash <coughs> carried from that place back there. So we're, we're trying to keep an eye on that kind of stuff, but we'll get into that in a moment. So those officers, their job is to go out and check those areas, go out and, and, and make sure that the, uh, the business owners, the property managers, let's say a property manager has an issue with, hey, look, there's a guy that comes out, it's kind of um, may appear to be homeless, walks out of the woods from that area. I think he's living back there. So instead of calling an officer in off the road that would handle 911 calls to go, go look in the woods for a, a, a tent or something, uh, this community officer can come in and make contact with him and say, look, you know, we have, we have homeless shelters. We have other ways to help you out with this. Uh, there's different programs we can put them in contact with and help them, you know, not only just get them out of the woods living in those tents, uh, but get them some help. Now, on the flip side, some folks just want to live in a tent in the woods. And that's okay. You just can't do it in the city of Jacksonville. Not long term anyway. <clears throat> so our job is to come into and, and, and those areas and help keep those areas clean. Can I just hit next on that? Will it yes, go sir. back? Okay, fantastic. So in doing that job, we have to make sure we maintain those relationships with code enforcement, uh, streets, and other local organizations, uh, and other law enforcement <coughs> agencies. Uh, to include uh, zoning enforcement, we get with them at least once a week, um, whether it be you know, waist-high grass that just refuses to, to get cut, um, whether it be you know, a, a, a house that the windows have been busted out for six months and nobody wants to fix or nobody can fix it, or maybe nobody can contact the, the property owner, the landowner. <clears throat> We actually have to maintain those relationships so we can clean up that kind of stuff. Um, again, those relationships with business owners, residential areas within uh, those sectors we mentioned earlier, apartment complex, and other local organizations. Uh, tasked to educate the public, uh, neighborhood watches. Uh, we're huge on neighborhood watches. Um, we, any, any, anybody that calls us, we actually go out and, and help start those. Now, once we get them started, we let them run themselves. It's not our job to maintain those, which is, which is a, a plus. They establish their own government. Uh, they establish their own rules and their own uh, block captains or ever how they want to run their government, and, and they take over their community. It's their community. They live in it. So why wouldn't you want to start that watch and start, you know, looking out for your neighbors, looking out for the strange cars coming through that you know don't live there, um, or you know your vacant houses where all of a sudden there's a bunch of cars hanging out, and you know nobody owns that home, and you know it's vacant. Uh, those kind of things you want to communicate about, and you want to call us so we can come in and handle those, those situations. Of course, we also assist with projects to improve the quality of life for the residents of the city of Jacksonville uh, and other community events. And this is another example of homeless trash. This was out at um, Yop Road. Uh, if, you're, if you come up to Yop Road at, at 258 and look to your right, where there used to be a, a used car lot there for a little while, um, that, but there's a, a very large wooded area in there. This is, again, some of the homeless uh, areas that are in the woods back there or was there. As you can see, the, the trash... People make you know, makeshift tents, they find old tarps or whatever, and they tie them up, you know, and they just really just end up living back there. So all their food, whatever it may be, all kinds of different materials you'll find back there. Some of them not so clean, some of them, you know, it is what it is. You can see here they, they try to tie up the uh, tarp there, trying to make a makeshift tent. And you see a lot of the officers out here. We've got some school resource officers, community officers. And of course, they got to leave their gun on because they got to look cool, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's after. Wow. Big difference, huh? Wow. Yes. Huge difference. Much better. 
we actually removed 1.2 metric tons of trash uh, from three different sites within the city. Uh, these sites have stayed clean, and we do check on them throughout, throughout our, our, our patrols. So keep those areas picked up. Officers worked uh, with the homeless um, who were using those sites by providing information for certain services, which I mentioned earlier. A graffiti removal. This is an ongoing issue. I think uh, different places are obviously different times a year. Uh, if it's left abandoned, and that's something else. You know, there's that, that broken window theory. Let's say you have an old home, and it's, it's fine. Nobody's messing with it. Nobody's living there. It's, it's abandoned. All of a sudden, you see a window's been, been broken out of it. Okay, well, that's, that's odd. Come back, there's another window broken out of it. And there's this, this subconscious thing in some people, I, I can't explain it to you, but they see a broken window. Hey, look, I can break that window. So eventually, the doors are kicked in. All the windows and glasses are broken. Um, it, it, it's torn apart. The plumbing's ripped out of it. All the wiring's ripped out for the copper. So in the, the, the house ends up becoming demolished, and, and you, can't, you can't do anything with it. So in that, we actually come in and get with streets and get with other, other departments, actually come in. If nobody is going to clean up that home, in, in some cases, we actually demolish the home and actually remove it. So that way, it's not an eyesore. It's, it doesn't reduce the property value of that community. So back to the, uh, the graffiti here. You can see this is uh, one of our bus stops, and somebody wants to spray some stuff up there. There's one of our community officers uh, cleaning that material off that uh, glass. And again, that's one of our other things that we look for is graffiti, you know, things. Any kind of, of negative appearing thing, is, is, that's our job. Long-term uh, appearance is actually what, what we're looking for. So afterwards, of course, much better. So that's, that pretty much sums up what we do. Um, anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. I was impressed. I don't know if it was your department, but at my office, I had left the door unlocked. And an officer called me and said, Ms. Saunders said, you know, your, bu your building is insecure. The doors was open. And I was just, I was just so impressed. Yes, ma'am. That, that's another job that, you know, and that's mostly a patrol, a patrol uh, requirement. They'll actually get out late at night. If, if it's kind of quiet, get out of their car and they'll walk. They'll walk, 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 checking doors, checking doors. And our, our goal is to find them before a bad guy does. Exactly. So that's, that's what we want to do. And believe it or not, we find a lot of open doors, a wow. lot of open doors. So it, that's, that's, a, that's a big, that's, that's a plus. So I'm glad we're able to find that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. If you have a piece of property that's adjoining yours that you feel like is being um, used by homeless people and you contact the business owner that owns that property, it's overgrown, and they won't do anything about it, could you contact you? You can certainly contact the community officer, and we can move forward with it from there. You know, It may be a zoning issue. It may be um, a code enforcement issue. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, there's a lot of things. I know there's certain... Um, uh, footage areas that have to be cleared from the roadway. There's, there's a lot of rules that come into that. So we can certainly we can certainly look into it, absolutely. You all remember the code enforcement's under Lily. <laughs> but we work together, as he said, so I'll eventually get the call. We do actually do a report um, every month that tells us where our code enforcement complaints come from, and a good percentage of them come from police officers so we only have three police officers for the, three code enforcement officers for the entire city. And because they are out there, that gives us an extra set of eyes. So we get a lot of calls weekly mm -hmm. from, from the police department. Well, we had gotten robbed, mm -hmm. and we felt like it was due to this, this area. Mm -hmm. But, oh, it's the right place now. Okay. Very good. And note the number that he's got on the screen. That's the non-emergency number. Um, you know, for police. But if you ever have a question like that, call these people over here. They'll help you out too at City Hall. <laughs> they know that number. They can get you through to it. <laughs> Anybody else? More questions? Okay. Very good. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> now let's move to our subcommittee reports. We'll start with our um, planning subcommittee. Well, I'll take that in Linda's absence. Ms. Linda's not um, able to be here tonight, but I will share that our next planning committee, subcommittee meeting is January the 5th. It's the first Thursday at 10 a.m. and it'll be held here in Johnson Boulevard uh, Conference Room. 
and then they will discuss activities for the upcoming year. So we'll be able to report back at your next meeting. And from some of that, you know, um, Sergeant may have some suggestions about areas that the committee may want to look at too. And um, obviously, code enforcement looks at those. Yeah, I just um, took also. a note: community cleanups, call yeah. JPD for some. <laughs> <laughs> Now the recognition subcommittee, Mr. Patrick. Mr. Glenn. <clears throat> okay, the following items were nominated. The law offices of Lynn Smith for business appearance. Find the pictures. I only have two of those. Okay. Bill Terrell for his role in cleaning up the corner of Old Bridge and Leonard Streets. We might mention a little more about that. Um, he obviously... Um, had an interest in some property in the area. He facilitated um, some combination of efforts there, and that led to the demolition of um, an old service station that many of you all remember that was there. And um, it certainly wasn't an, uh, a pleasant visual appearance in the, for the city of Jacksonville. So that was why he was nominated for his role in causing it would not have been um, torn down had he not become involved in, in taking this as a financial action under in his own to um, get these lots put together in such a way that could, this could happen. An old Brits Motorsports building for business appearance. And this one was nominated um, in that, well, as you well remember, when Ryan King comes and speaks to you about what the requirements are for <coughs> landscaping, um, they went above and beyond. And while this picture is not the most spectacular picture of what it is that they did out there, but they put in a far more um, vegetation than what had been called for. Uh, they wanted this type of lush appearance and such out there. And as you know, against that, this is on Lejeune Boulevard, which no, most of us know um, is pretty concrete looking most of the time. And this certainly softens that area that's out there as it was. Many of you will remember this as the old National Dodge building. That's, those are the three. We need to vote on this, or it's your is committee. It for, is it three, are you looking for three or one, or what? Whatever you all you got, want. You got two businesses, and you got some, uh, Mr. Terrell for his cleanup role. So that would be a separate category, right? Right. Mm -hmm. We can do we can do all three of them if you'd like. What's your guidance? I think you should. I think you should do all mm -hmm. three. I did too. Do you want to give uh, award to all three? Yeah. We'll make it happen then. Okay. That's what it was. <laughs> Very good. Mm -hmm. Um, well, one of the things is, is that you've been um, asking about um, a potential to guide around. Um, we're asking the committee to consider if you want to do it December 13th. Um, you could ride around um, some of the neighborhoods um, that look for holiday decorations or other items. Um, we would propose to leave, say, 515, 530, um, and spend about an hour and a half um, doing this as it was. And um, um, one of these fine people will be calling you up, and if you don't respond to the email, we'll ask you if you all can <laughs> attend or whatever there, and, um, and and then go from there. And we'll know what size vehicle we need. Very good. For the next section, I'll call on the staff to lead us. Well, um, after um, the last meeting, we want to bring you up to speed on a couple things. Obviously, the strategic um, discussion. Um, you had been challenged after your um, after the um, last uh, the December a year ago session when you met with the city council to talk about strategic things and what things you could do as a committee to meet those goals and objectives of the city council. Now, what we want to tell you uh, first off is that the, the 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 session for this year, not yet revealing the topic to you, but I will tell you it's not going to be something that you have ever done before. Um, is set for 5 p.m. on January the third. Now, that's in lieu of a regular city council workshop. The full city council uh, will be in session as part of this, um, this, uh, this meeting with you, the advisory committees of the city of Jacksonville. And that's expected to last about an hour and a half to two hours. So if you'll go ahead and block that off, it'll include a dinner for you. And um, um, obviously, they want to put you to work, coming up with some ideas on some, a topic that, again, this is one we haven't addressed before. Um, and then if we just go right on with the, um, the situation there, I want to mention to you about on the Lejeune Greenway and Trail, you'll notice that um, the, the, the city and the contractor was very frugal with the, um, the expense for that. We've been able to use the available <coughs> grant money to actually, we had to cut some things out, and now we've added them back in. So the portion of the trail that go the Greenway that goes in front of the um, um, Montford Point National Cemetery is now under construction. And previously, that had to be cut out. 
So that's what's going on with that at this time. Um, they're hoping to be through with this by the end of January or so. Um, obviously, it's weather dependent. And also, as we know, the um, asphalt can't be poured um, when it's really cold. Okay. So um, that's also potential. They've got to work with that, too, as it was. As to the um, Beirut Memorial Grove, um, this report is very short. The trees, every one of them has survived. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. you know, we have been... You got one down. Well, that was the report as of this morning when I called. Oh, I talked to this morning, this afternoon. Okay. A tree at the top of the hill is cut right in half. It's gone. <laughs> well, gee. So there's your report. <laughs> you just <laughs> really... When's your day? Yeah, you just really rained but, on our but parade. I, but I, I thought, <laughs> I figured you knew about it because the rest of the tree was gone. So I thought, well, you must know about it because it's gone. But the tree's cut right off. The only thing's left is a little stump. I haven't mm. seen it, too. I haven't seen some. Well, anyway, as you know, we purchased <laughs> more, many more trees than what was needed for the 273 trees. So what they'll do is they'll go to their backup that's been planted out there to hold them at the commons, and they'll just replace them as that was. So they're all going to be the same age, you know, at the time. Right at the what top. about the sign? The okay. sign is still in discussion. Um, the city council actually is considering the broader wayfinding at this time, and then to go from there. Um, and we're going to show you a little bit on that. Well, I'll just move right into that then, as it was. Um, in the gateway signs right now, um, the city council's seen the proposals for the actual gateways that would be out there. They're going to consider these. Um, and um, the, the, here's, here's some of the plans for putting them together. And then the promotional signing that you've seen before, they're going to consider this sign and its location there at the intersection of Western Boulevard and Gateway North um, at their next session. And I'm going to let Lily Gray talk to you now about um, murals. You all have um, <coughs> had much the interest in murals, and so the City Council on December the 6th will consider this document that she's going to talk to you about now. Yes, we now are, we are proposing the City Council to implement a downtown mural overlay district and add that to our unified development or ordinance. We were fortunate enough to get a grant this year of approximately $94,000, and we'll use a portion of that to fund some in, the installation of some murals. In order to do that, we need to take this to City Council. And there'll be some standards, talks about the borders that need to go around the murals, approved uh, materials and limits on what they can and cannot do, no animation, for example, um, some down lighting features, and how the murals should be installed as far as being applied to various surfaces. And then this, this is the proposed boundaries. It would just um, go along the properties on Newbridge Street and around Railroad and the Court Street downtown area. So this will not be a citywide program. That's why it's going to just be an overlay district, and this is where those murals will be allowed if approved by council. So that will be discussed on um, December, 6th. December 6th, and if that is approved, we'll move forward and have some artwork and some appearance amenities in our downtown. Sounds good. Sorry. Um, and then in summary, Madam Vice Chair there, um, we certainly want to um, encourage you to make note of those dates that um, have been included in your agenda, and particularly that January 3rd date as it was. So that's the report from your staff. Thank you. Since Suzanne is absent this evening, we won't um, have a report from the planning um, board. But um, are there any other comments or questions? What's going on on Highway 17? Um, before you get to Walmart. So it looks like they're doing a lot of major landscaping there. I'll let you take it, Lily. My liqueur is in full bloom there. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, I thought she was going to ask about the build, the new businesses going up, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of landscaping on 17. I know they just finished Probably landscaping on the bypass. The, 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 the oh, yeah. the is yeah. that what you're yeah, speaking of? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So okay. Yes, yes. yes. You remember he showed difficult. you the plans of what was uh -huh. going to be done there in between in the that big triangle area that's uh -huh. created where you drive up to the stoplight and then turn left um, there. Yeah. They, they're actually planting landscaping there and uh, to the point of um, sunshine, not wildflowers. This is actually, you know, um, the names of the flowers just went right out of my head. But anyway, stuff you all know <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's going to be out there. And, yeah. um, and remember, he talked about how the, it's going to be designed so it can be easily mowed. Oh, right. So it's not there. And if you, if you go down, particularly on the parkway, and on Huff Drive, you'll see how the That's landscaping's right. on one side, then goes on the other, so they can just <laughs> mow and, you know, do as few passes as possible there, because sometimes landscaping beats mowing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw Huff Drive the other day when I drove past, yeah. and it looks awesome. It's beautiful, isn't it? 
We, you know, Jackson. Lily, we didn't think about this. We should mention, too, the City Council on December 6th is also going to look at, um, at their last regular um, workshop meeting, they talked about the streetscapes yes. for New Bridge Street. Yes. And so they're going to talk about concepts at the December um, 6th meeting um, that's going to be talking about bulb outs and some of the things that are there. So you might tune into that meeting or attend if you so desire to do that as it was. Roundabouts. Yes. And roundabout. Yes, yes. I heard that. I saw that last meeting. <laughs> Everyone has an opinion about roundabouts. Oh, God. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, with, are there any other questions, comments? <coughs> any other business? With no further business to discuss, then, wish everyone a Merry Christmas, and we will adjourn the meeting. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs>